Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we are going to fix a problem we have at the moment on all our pages, which is all of them have the exact same uh, meta title tag. Okay, so if you guys pay attention at the top left, I have zoomed in a little bit. We are showing yellow news on our homepage. If I go to the blog page, our page title is still yellow news. If I go to Laravel tutorial, again, we have yellow news. This is obviously not good for both SEO and also from the user's perspective. So let's go ahead and fix this. It should be a very easy uh, fix. So I'm going to go back to our code base. And if you guys take a look on our layouts, we obviously have our app and guest layout, which we set up already. And under this title, this is basically right now we are showing our application name, which we set up on our .env file. So whatever you have over here is going to be used over here, right? Now, generally what you want is to have the page title, the current page, then followed by some sort of separator, let's say dash, and then your website name, right? That's the, kind of the most common format I've seen. Of course, some websites don't even have the website name, they just have the current page title. So it's up to you which one you wanna use. Now, how do we get this page title passed in from every single page, right? Now, there are a few different ways you can do it. So one common way I have seen a lot is you can go ahead and use the yield. And we are actually already using yield for our hero section. So the way you would use yield is you can just say yield title. And then in order to pass that, that title from every single page, let's say our from our home page, we can open up home and you can do this anywhere on the page, but I'm going to do it at the top over here and say section title and then pass the title as a second argument. In this case, let's say home page, right? So this is how you would go ahead and use yield, right? Very easy to do. And if I go back and I reload, we actually get home page at the top. Let me zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. So this is how uh, yield works, right? Now you can go ahead and use yield if you guys would like. I personally prefer to use props. So let me show you guys the way I would do it, or I have done it before and I prefer. So let me remove this. So the way I prefer to do this is I'll prefer to actually define a prop on my layout. So let's do that. I'm going to say props and then define a title prop. And instead of using yield, I'll just use the variable title. Okay. So I'm going to say title. Now this title could be null, right? So you may not set the title on some pages. So I'll use the null operator and I'll set it to an empty string, right? So this is the easiest way of doing it. Now we do have this kind of separator over here which will cause some issues. I'll show you guys uh, what I mean in a second, but this is the easiest way, you just use a prop. And then in order to actually pass this title, well, let's open up our homepage again. You can just basically pass the prop over here, right? The same way we have been using, uh, you know, this postcard over here, right? We were passing in the post. Same thing, we can go ahead and say title equals, uh, you know, home page. I really like this syntax and because it's, you know, it's very easy to read. So I generally prefer to use this if you are using a, a blade component for your layout file. So that's how I would personally do it. So let's go ahead, do a reload. And now if I zoom in, obviously it's gonna look exactly the same. Now we do have one issue with this. If I go to a page that doesn't have a title set, we get a dash then the yellow news. So this is a little bit annoying. I don't like to see that. So we do need to fix it. And this is relatively easy to fix guys. So let me show you guys how you can fix that. So uh, we can go ahead and use an is set to fix that. So the way I would generally do it is I'll just do a quick is set check to make sure title is actually set, right? So it's not null. And then if it is set, we can do kind of an inline if statement. On the true statement, we can do title and then kind of add our separator, okay, this dash. And then for the else statement, which is kind of uh, noted with this double colon, we just show an empty string, right? Now, since we have this dash over here, we can remove it from this side. And this is how you can go ahead and ensure that you don't show the dash when title is not set. So let's save this, let's go back. I'll do a quick reload. And now if I zoom in on the blog page, we are no longer showing the dash. But if I go to the home page, we do show it. So this is how I personally do it generally, I would say majority of the time. So you can go ahead and do it the way I do, or you can do whichever you prefer. You can also use yield if you like. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove this Laravel. Uh, we just show nothing if we don't have a title. Now, some people prefer to 
kind of dynamically do this instead of passing it in. So they get, for example, the route name and then they display it here. It's up to you if you want to do that. I think this is a bit better because you have more control and you can also translate these if you need. So now that we have this, guys, let's go ahead and set the page for all the pages we have. So we already did it for the title page, for the home page. Let's go ahead and also do it for our blog page. So our blog page is posts index. So let's go ahead and add this as well. I'll do title. Uh, let's just name it blog. Uh, you guys can set this to whatever you like. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to blog. And uh, next up, we have our blog show page, this one. So this is going to be the show page. Now for this one, I'll set it to the post title. Okay, so I'll do title and then I'll do post title. Now, if you guys uh, remember, uh, I use this double colon syntax a lot when working with blade components, as you guys can see. We did it with author. It basically makes it so whatever you put inside these double quotes are interpreted as PHP. I just wanted to kind of do a quick reminder on this. So if you don't add the double colon, you do need to go ahead and add these uh, curly brackets, okay? Double curly brackets. So let's set it back to the double colon. So if I reload now, we should get the page title followed by a yellow news. And let me zoom in again so you guys can see. So that's it. Okay, and I think that's all the pages we have. Now, we do also have our login and logout page. So if we go to those pages, we are not getting this format. Now, our login and logout page are actually using a different layout. They are not using the app layout. They are using the guest layout. Now, this guest layout is kind of redundant at the moment because they are exa it's exactly identical to our app layout. So I think now is a good time to go ahead and remove it. Now, if you guys are using a different uh, kind of, what's it called? layout as I am, they're like a different HTML template that I provided you guys, then you may want to go ahead and keep this guest layout. But in this template, the guest and the actual application layout is exactly the same, right? So it's kind of, there is no need for us to have a separate guest layout. So let's go ahead and delete this. Now, in order to delete it, we need to first delete the blade file. So I'm going to delete that. We also need to delete the corresponding PHP file, okay? So it is going to be inside app view components and this guest layout. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well. Now, one more thing while we are on the PHP file, guys, instead of defining a prop, we could have also passed or defined this title inside our app layout by defining it as a public property, something like this, and then added a constructor. Uh, I generally prefer the prop way, so I'm not going to be covering this way, but it is something you can do if, you know, you guys want to do so that's it now that we have deleted both the php file and the blade file we have removed the layout but if we reload we should or you should get an error like this right so we also need to go ahead and update all our authentication pages okay so let me open up the login page it should be under views auth login and if you guys take a look we are doing x guest layout so we need to change all these auth pages now you can do it manually in order to make this easier i'm going to go ahead and select this and then if you're on VS Code or PHP Storm, I think Sublime Text, I think all major text editors have that or IDEs. And if you're on Windows, do Control Shift F. And if you're on Mac, do Command Shift F. I'm on Mac, so I'm going to do Command Shift F. And this lets you do a kind of a folder wide or project wide search, right? So it searches your entire project for X guest layout. In this case, it found 18 results, right? For all the authentication pages. And then if you click on this toggle over here, you can go ahead and replace this with whatever you like. There should be something similar on PHP Storm as well. Same for VS Code uh, and Sublime Text. Whatever editor you guys are using, they should all have this. So I'm going to go ahead and replace guest layout with app layout. And then hit this AB to AC. Okay, so this replace all button. This will ask me to confirm. I will say replace. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So it's automatically replaced for us. So if I reload now, we should be able to actually see this. Now... This won't automatically add the title for us. We still need to go ahead and open up all these pages. So let me open up login. We still need to go over here and do a title. And I'm going to say login. Now to save time, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and set this for our login and register. And I'll set the other ones on my own time off camera. So I'll let you guys do that on your own as well. So I'll go to register and I'll also do it over here. Title, register. The remaining pages are going to be exact same thing, like reset password to, to a factor authentication. Uh, verify email and things like that so i'll let you guys do that on your own time it should be very simple exact same thing we've done so far all right guys so that's it now one more thing i would also like to fix on this episode is 
This was actually something you guys asked me in the comments, and which is when we search for something, let's say I come over here and I search for Lara, you generally, from user perspective, they expect you, they expect that if they hit enter, you know, you will perform the search results, right? And if you're using a regular uh, HTML form, that should happen, right? If you hit enter, it will go ahead and search. Now, on our application, we are not actually doing that. So let's go ahead and add that. It should be very easy to do with Alpine.js. So we can add the functionality so we are also searching if we hit the enter key. So uh, let's go ahead and open up our search box. This is our search box. Now with Alpine.js, it's very easy to do keyboard shortcuts. So the way you would do it, guys, is you can do X on and then do key up. So key up, as the name suggests, is when you hit a button and then you lift it, right? And then after that, you need to do dot followed by the key you want or the key combination you want. So in this case, I want the enter key. I just type this in. Now you do need to check the uh, Alpine documentation for the list of supported key and the, the name for them. But it should have all the common ones, such as enter, shift, things like that. So I just do enter and then you can do an equal sign. And inside this, perform whatever action you want. It's actually very similar to X on click, okay? So in this case, I'll just copy this dispatch event we had, and I'll put it inside these double quotes. Exact same thing, right? So I'll save this up. It did format it for me, so it's okay. And that's all we have to do. So let's go back. I'll do a quick reload. I'll type in Lara, and I'll hit enter. Previously, it wasn't working, so I'll hit enter again, and it automatically searched up for me. Now, the way Alpine.js works, guys, is by default, if you are adding something like this, it will only search if you are focused on your Alpine element, okay, or your Alpine component. So the enter only works if I'm actually focused on my input box. If I'm kind of click outside and it's not focused and I hit enter, nothing will happen. Let me remove this. If I hit enter, nothing is happening. I'm hitting it very hard, so hopefully you guys can hear. I don't know if it's being picked up by my microphone, but it is not working. So in order to make it work anywhere on the screen, even when you're not focused, you need to go ahead and also add dot window. Okay, let me save this. Now we do need to reload the page. Now, if I type in Lara, I'll make it out of focus and I hit enter. It also does the search. So it's up to you guys if you want the first behavior or the window behavior. I'm going to go ahead and keep the window. I think it's a little bit better for us. So I'll keep that. And that's it, guys, for the second thing I wanted to cover. So today's episode is going to be a very short one. On the next episode, what we are going to do, guys, is we are going to add a popular section over here so we can show all the posts with the most number of likes. So that's going to be what we cover on the next episode. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, make sure you like the video and subscribe. That's a way, the best way to support the channel. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.